You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks. So the former sheriff in Milwaukee County, David Clark, has uh, his inaction in his jail has led to the family of Terrell Thomas getting $7 million. Thomas died of dehydration in Sheriff Clark's jail when he was denied water for seven days. The family attorney described his death as torture. While in jail, his water turned off because he supposedly flooded another cell by stuffing a mattress in the toilet. Well, the water was never turned back on, and he died a week later. Now, of course, David Clark is no longer the sheriff there, uh, and, of course, he has nothing to say about this. It's no shock whatsoever. Uh, but this also speaks to the kind of treatment that we see uh, in jails uh, across this country. We want to talk about this here with our pound. Joining us right now is a former NFL player, Texas A&M player, Martellus Bennett, Dr. Greg Carr, Chair, Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University. Also joining us is Teresa Lundy, founder of TML Communications, and, of course, the loudmouth himself, the loud, ca the loudmouth Kappa, a. Scott okay. Bolden, former chair of National Bar Association Political Action Committee, but it's two alphas here, so we'll keep, you, we'll, keep, we'll keep the little kappa in order. Oh, uh, I, I want to start, so, so stop talking, stop here talking. Here's the thing that's crazy about this here. Here you got Sheriff Clark running his mouth, talking about being a fiscal conservative, loving Donald Trump, uh, and now the Trump people have actually kicked him to the curb. Uh, and he's such a whip, he even blocked me on Twitter because he don't want to debate me like the fo other Fox News people. But this is a guy, he literally, he literally, uh, kept water from this guy. This guy was over the jail, and he didn't care. He didn't care. His brother died. And in fact, four people died in his jail under his leadership watch. I mean, it's ridiculous. He's shown that he has no regard for human life. He's got a long track record of abuse. Uh, last time I saw David Clark, he was sitting in the studio when you posted him up in there. He didn't know you were going to call him online in the air. And, 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 and he just turned around, and at one point, he kind of smiled. He broke character. He knows this is wrong. Fortunately, a court of law also has, you know, enforced that it's wrong. But, but this just talks, it really spe speaks to the deep cynicism in the GOP at this point. And they'll use anybody until they won't. Ben Carson's probably next. They're going to kick them both to the curb. Martellus, we've got a bunch of other stories of, again, people uh, being beaten, attacked in prison. Uh, and there's a, just this gross disregard for people who are in prison. And unfortunately, too many other people say, oh, they deserve to be there. Who cares? Even though they might be in prison, they're still human beings. Yeah, I think there's a... People, when they look at someone for what they did, they don't really think about growth. You think about reform, prison reform, or you think about the ability to change people and how people could change. There's no, put, anything is not, nothing's put in place for grow people as they're in prison. They go there and they're forgotten. They get lost in the shuffle. There has to be something where they continue to be educated and continue to be, to continue to grow as people. That's the biggest thing. Like, no one should really be punished forever. They could learn and they could grow, and they should be able to show how much they have grown and how much they have learned. Well, you, well, you can't growth. learn and grow here because he's dead. Well, well, you need, you know, it's interesting you talk about growth, but the reality is the, the, the captors, the oppressors, the police, the prosecutors need room for growth, too, because none of this is personal. And, you know, as a former prosecutor from New York and criminal defense lawyer, when I would have clients who would come in and clearly look like they've been abused from head to shoulders and what have you, mm. we would ask the pictures be taken of them in court. This happens every day in courtrooms and jails across this country. You just don't necessarily hear about it. And that needs to be reformed because I can see it. I can report it. I can put it on the record and what have you. But these prisoners, these young kids, older prisoners, you name it, that, that are processed through the court system or they're at Rikers Island and come, uh, they're not only abused in prison but abused on the way there. And because they're prisoners, because they are accused of having crimes, nobody really cares. And their public defenders are very limited as well. And then the prosecutors, if you care, that's one thing. Most really don't, de facto don't. And so they're caught up in this uh, political and criminal justice vortex that won't let them go. They get lucky if they can get out, if they have money for bail, or if they beat the charge, right? Mm. That alone should be enough for them not to go back to prison. Teresa, what, you what you're dealing with is, again, we have a society in this case uh, where th this, uh, this fake black man, uh, David Clark, uh, <laughs> treated inmates as if they were nothing. Sort of like uh, Sheriff Arpaio uh, in uh, Arizona. It's probably who he wanted to model after. This guy's dead. 
This is not somebody who was injured, right. went to the hospital. He's dead. Right, and Sheriff Clark treated them as they were slaves, treated them, uh, these prisoners, these humans, these brothers, these nephews, like they were forgotten, like they were lost, like um, they went to sentence and then they pretty much got sentenced to death under his ruling. So when I see the GOP kind of toss him to the side and by the waistline, I'm, I'm actually glad because I hope it's a wake-up call to every African-American that is under the GOP, GOP especially as the administration signed a criminal justice bill, um, but as we can see, that it's trickling down to some of those law enforcement that's agencies. The feds too. It's absolutely it's, it's not even at the state level, and they're more state prisoners than federal prisoners. And, right. of, course, and of course, we haven't heard anything from Candace Owens or the other black people who love running their mouths. <laughs> and you won't, because, because it, I think everybody's taking a reevaluation of themselves, especially you know African Americans who are a part of the. Not GOP. them. I mean, they not. They, no, they not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm no, they not. Because they're Teresa, silent. No, they not. No, they not. We don't know. They, what they're they're not. They're silent because they don't want to speak to this issue because it speaks to their gross negligence. And also, right. it sure. also shows all these fake ass conservatives who care about tax dollars. That's seven million dollars of taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, they don't see. They love talking about fiscal conservatism, but they don't care when Chicago spends half a billion on police settlements. Mm -hmm. They don't care when New York City spends almost a billion on police settlements. We can go on and on and on. Right. They don't care about any of that because, again, and they also don't care because they're also these fake-ass pro-lifers. <laughs> see, don't tell me you pro-life when it's a fetus, but then you not pro-life when somebody dies in a jail. Mm -hmm. And so this sh that's why they're silent because they have situational ethics and situational morals. Well, That's the deal. Greg, final comment. It's, it's interesting. There, there are about 1,250 majority black controlled cities in this country. I mean, run by black mm -hmm. mayors, black, about 1,250, according mm -hmm. to Pew and some mm -hmm. other people. Uh, Milwaukee is one now with a plurality of black people. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing around the city is as black people gain control of some of these municipalities, you begin to see black political Doesn't power begin to see. Yeah, well, in well, this is, this, like this? well, this is what okay, I'm saying. Okay, stop. First of all, this is one of the city. He was sheriff of the county. Right, but this is this is what I'm saying. You, no, it's not the same. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that you can have a black city, and if you have other counties that are predominantly white, that's how he was able to win. That's where I was going well, because like Milwaukee the in the county, and then the state of Wisconsin, a so-called swing state, where you see this gerrymander issue, all these things we've been talking about. A guy like David Clark is backed up by those white supremacists in in, in Wisconsin, okay. and so when he drops down on the ground in a place like Milwaukee or in the county, he's being suborned by people who have absolutely no regard Precisely. for life, right. which is why they wanted him to run for United. As they sent it, yes. right. but of course it went nowhere, that's and right. so that's what happens. That's right. See, if you read your research, you would know those things, Scott. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Hey, guys, they're back. MarijuanaStock.org has another great investment opportunity. If you were lucky enough to invest in their last crowdfunding campaign, you know they raise a lot of money in just a few months investing in legal marijuana farms. Those additional investors now own shares of a publicly traded company. They're on fire now. Of course, many of you missed it the first time. Now you have a second shot. They have a new investment opportunity that is as good or if not better than the last time. I'm talking about industrial hemp CBD. For those who don't know, the hemp plant is the cousin to marijuana with a much higher concentration of CBD, which means hemp CBD gives you all of the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you hot. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the United States and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill recently passed in Congress, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the U.S. and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. They need land to grow all of the plants. This makes for an incredible investment opportunity, and that's where our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD grow operations and lease it to licensed hemp paying tenants. Now, that's right, they are hemp CBD landlords and you can get in on the action. You can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as 200 bucks up to $10,000. Like I said, you don't wanna miss out. You should certainly join the folks who are investing. You can go to marijuanastock.org, marijuanastock.org uh, to get in the game and you should do it now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.